you guys, we're talking about slope. It's like we're in algebra class or something. Um, so today we're going to find the slope of a line, and we're also going to decide if lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we know from algebra that the rise is the difference in the y values of two points on a line. So to find the rise, I can take this y value, y sub 2, and subtract my other y value from it. So I can't tell what these points are. What is this, like 5, 7? And this one is 1, 1. So I can take my first y value, sorry, this my y sub 2 and subtract my y sub 1 from it. 7 minus 1 is 6. So my rise is a difference. My y sub 2 minus my y sub 1. It's just my jump from 1 to 7. And I can do the same thing to find my run. So I can take my x coordinates boo, 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 and do 5 minus 1 and I get a run of 4. Right? So I can just find the run by taking my x sub 2 minus my x sub 1. Okay, so we can find the rise over run for points in the plane. Okay, look at this example. We have to find the slope of AB. Okay, so AB is here. I need two pretty points, so I need points that are in the crosshairs. Okay, I can't pick a point like this. That is not a pretty point. Don't use ones like that. Okay, so I've got, what is this? Three, seven, and I've got negative two, seven. So I do 7 minus 7 over my 3 minus a negative 2. If I have minus a negative 2, that turns into a plus. Okay, so 7 minus 7, that's 0. 3 plus 2 is 5. 0 divided by 5 is 0. My m is 0. And you can tell that it should be 0 because that is a horizontal flat line. Okay, let's do AC. Okay, C is 4, 2. Okay, so I want my Y sub 2 minus my Y sub 1 over my X sub 2 minus my X sub 1. So I can label these as my X sub 1, X sub 2, whoops. I meant y sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So it's just telling me the x and y coordinates, and the subscripts just tell me which point. This is point 1, this is point 2. Okay, so my y sub 2 is 2, so I'm going to plug that in in my formula. My y sub 2 is 2, my y sub 1 is 7. My x sub 2 is 4, and my x sub 1 is negative 2. Okay, now I have minus a negative here, so that's going to turn into a plus, because I'm subtracting the opposite. Okay, so 2 minus 7, that gives me a negative 5, and 4 plus 2 is 6, so that's negative 5 sixths for my m. Oops, I need equals m. All right, this, um, this graph is getting a little crazy, so we're not going to look at it anymore. We're going to do one on the other graph, and then we're going to be done finding slope, because seriously, you should remember how to do this. And if you don't, I'll put a slope video up for you. All right, okay, find line one. Okay, so we need some pretty points for line one. Right. Okay, so if they give you a graph like this, seriously, you can just make a slope triangle and count it. So I can just go down two. That's my rise. 
Okay, write one. That's my run. So if I put my rise over my run, that's negative two over one, which is just negative two. Okay, I'll do one more like that so you can see. Um, line two. Okay, pretty points, pretty points. Jeez, it's kind of hard to tell, huh? Okay, this one also has a negative slope. So this one is going down two for the rise. And it's running three. So my rise over run will be negative two thirds. Okay, I'll do one more with the slope triangle and then we gotta move on because you guys are gonna get bored. Um, let's do let's do line three. That one is kind of exciting. Okay, I'll pick my two pretty points. Okay, so my first pretty point is six, seven. And my other pretty point is two, five. Okay, so here's my x sub one, my y sub one, my x sub two, my y sub two. Okay. And my n is my y sub 2 minus my y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right, now I just have to plug in my stuff. m equals my y sub 2 is 7. My x sub, my y sub 1 is 5. My x sub 2 is 6. My x sub 1 is 2. So 7 minus 5, that is 2. And 6 minus 2 is 4. This is reducible. I need to say that my n is 1 half. I have to reduce it if I can. I can't leave it not reduced. Okay, so you've got lots of examples of finding slope. We're going to skip the rest. Okay, you might recognize this from your warm up yesterday. We've got a bunch of different kinds of slope. We can have positive slope where our graph is increasing when we read it from left to right. Oops, left to right. The graph is increasing. We can have negative slope when we read it from left to right. The graph is decreasing. Okay, we can have a slope of zero, which is when we have a horizontal line. Oh, that's gonna annoy me, hold on, sorry. Okay, look away, it's gonna get gross for a second. Okay, horizontal, remember that has a zero slope, a zero for the M, and it'll be a Y equals some number equation. Like this might be Y equals four, or Y equals two, there's no X. All right, um, so that, that's our hoy. Or we could have a vertical line with undefined slope. So this is vertical. Okay, we have undefined slope. You can think of it like it's infinitely steep, so we can't define it. And we'll have an x equals some number equation. Okay, and that's your vux, hoy vux. All right, so for parallel and perpendicular lines, they share a special relationship. In a, par in, uh, in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope and any two uh, vertical lines are parallel. Okay, that's fun. Um, this means if and only if, that's a special math word, and it's like IFF. That's the abbreviation for it. And it's special. It means that it's true backwards and forwards. So we, if lines are parallel, we know they have the same slope. Also, if lines have the same slope, we know they're parallel. So we can go backwards or forwards making conclusions. So that's going to be very important for us. Now, for perpendicular lines, it's a little weird. Um, in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if 
So this is going to be true backwards and forwards. The product of their slopes is negative 1. Okay, so if their product of their slopes is negative 1, they are what we call opposite reciprocals. Okay, back in Algebra 1, we learned that reciprocals were numbers that multiply to positive 1. Reciprocals multiply to 1, positive 1. So like 2 thirds and 3 halves are reciprocals. And when I multiply them, I get 6 over 6, which is 1. Okay? So now I'm telling you that if we have perpendicular lines, their slopes will be opposite reciprocals. So that means they have to multiply to negative 1. For example, like um, 2 fifths times, whoops, here, let me not use a dot. I'm going to use parentheses because I'm going to have a negative. 5 halves. So you can see that they're reciprocals. They're flipped upside down, right? They're multiplicative inverses. And they're also opposite in sign. So when I multiply them, I'm going to get a negative 10 over a positive 10, which is a negative 1. So that's an example of opposite reciprocals. Um, horizontal and vertical lines are perpendicular. Okay, thank you. We probably could have figured that out. Duh. Um, why is that? Well, um, if we have 0 divided by any number, that equals 0, right? Okay, so that's, you know, if we have any, um, yeah, all right. If we have any number divided by 0, you can try it. Divide any number by 0 on your calculator and you'll get an error because they're all undefined. Uh, I missed an E. Okay, so that's why those are perpendicular. Cool. Next. Um, this has a typo. If a line has a slope of A over B, then the slope of a perpendicular line is... Okay, that's obviously upside down. It should be negative B over A. Would you please fix that? So the math gods don't, like, strike me down in my sleep. Okay. Graph each pair of lines. We have to use their slopes to determine whether they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. All right. So UV, UV goes through U02. 0, 0, 2. That's U. V is at negative 1, negative, oh, I chose a bad spot. Okay, negative 1, negative 1. Nope, that was negative 1, positive 1. Down here. Sorry, right, I'll get it. It's still early. All right. So when I look at the line that would pass through these two points, it's going to have to rise 3 and run 1. So I can add some more points. And then graph that line. Pew, 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 pew. Okay. So I know that its rise is 3 and its run is 1. So I can say that the M for uh, line UV is 3. All right, let's find the other one. So x is at 3, 1. And y is at negative 3, positive 3. I don't know about you guys, but these graphs without all of the numbers kind of freak me out a little bit. It's fine. I'm, I can handle it, but it's kind of messing me up. So I can see that this is going down 1, right 3. Down one, right three. Down one, right three. Down one, right three. So I can add some more points. Okay. Graph my line all the way across. 
arrows on both ends so your Algebra 1 teacher doesn't have to come back and haunt you. Okay, now let's find the slope. My rise is down 1, and my run is right 3. So my slope for line xy is negative 1 over 3. Now, just kind of eyeballing it, this is looking pretty promising like opposite reciprocals. But the test is, when we multiply them together, do we get negative 1? So let's do the test. 3 times, times negative 1 third. We want to know what it is. So underneath the 3 is hiding an invisible 1. We can divide any number by 1 and not change it. 1 is hiding under all of our numbers. So when I multiply across my numerators, we've got to stay in our lane. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And multiply across my denominators, 1 times 3 is 3. Reduce it, and I do, in fact, get negative 1. So this, I can say that line UV is perpendicular to line xy. I'm going to write the word too in case that's what I'm supposed to do. Look perpendicular. Okay, that's it. That's not so bad. Let's do another one. I don't know that we have to do all of these guys. Holy crap. Hold on, I'm going to figure out which other one we need to do. We do not need to do all these. OMG. Okay, we are going to do these, but we're going to go fast. Okay. Okay, G that negative 3, negative 2. Um, H is at 1, 2. Okay, so that one is going up four, right four. So that one would be uh, four over four, which is one. So this one has a slope of one. What we need, well, let's just see what the other one is. So negative two, positive four, uh, two, negative four. This one is going, this one looks like it's going down to right one. Okay. So those are not opposite reciprocals or they're not the same. So this is neither. It's neither parallel nor perpendicular. Okay, what about negative one, negative three? Negative one, negative three, one, one. Okay, that is going up five, one, two, three, four, five. And right two. So this one has a slope of five, over 2, and this one, negative 1, 1, and 0, 3. Oh my gosh, where is my brain? Okay, that one is going... Oh, guys, hold on. I put that point in the wrong spot. Okay, so it was supposed to be negative 1, negative 3. And then it was 1, 1, and I think I put mine at 1, 2. So this is not 5 halves. It's 4 over 2. Let's go back and fix it. Sorry. Okay, this is rising 4, running 2. I put it up too high, and so I messed up my slope. So that reduces to 2. 
and this one, negative one, one, and zero, three. This one is also going up to uh, rise to run one. So this one also has a slope of two. These are parallel. If they have the same slope, they are parallel. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you guys do this one on your own. You should get one is horizontal, one is vertical, and these should be perpendicular. All right, we're going to move on. Now, a parallelogram has opposite sides or parallel. Opposite sides are parallel. Hence the name parallelogram. So, if we look at opposite sides, we can see that this one, this side rises four runs one, and this side rises four and runs one. Okay, so those M's are both four, so those sides are parallel. Pew, 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 pew. All right, and then if I look at these other two sides, both of them are horizontal. So this one has an M of zero, and this one has an M of zero. So those sides are parallel. Pew, 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 pew. Now a rectangle is special. A rectangle has, it's a parallelogram, so the opposite sides are parallel, okay? But it also has four right angles for its interior angles. So it means that the um, adjacent sides are perpendicular. So it, these have to be perpendicular. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, so let's show that that's true. The slope for this guy is up one, right three. So that's one third. And down here, it's also going up one, right three. So that's one third also. So far, so good. We're shown it's a parallelogram. Now what we need is for the other two sides to be have a slope of negative three. So down three, right one, that's negative three. And down three, right one, that's negative three. Okay, we have to state the slope of each line and determine whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, good grief. Here we go. So here are the slopes. These are both in y equals mx plus b form. So I can see the m's here and here. Okay, guys, those are opposites, but they are not opposite reciprocals. So these are neither. All right. Um, one of these is in y equals mx plus b form. The other one is not. So I'm going to have to convert it. So I'm going to have to divide this side by 6 and this side by 6. Now, when I divide by 6, both terms in my numerator have to get divided by 6. So I'll get y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. Okay, so I have matching slopes. I have negative 1 third and negative 1 third. These are parallel. Okay, wow, these both need to be rearranged. So, I don't want my x's over there with my y's. I gotta get rid of them. Sorry, I was really far zoomed in. I gotta get rid of them and move them to the other side. If I add them to add them off to the other side, they turn positive. So I'll have 2y equals 4x plus 16. Now I have to divide by 2. Divide by two, pew, pew, 
and I get y equals 2x plus 8. Okay, now I want point slope form, and I have to turn it into slope intercept form. Distribute my 2, I get y minus 10 equals 2x minus 2. I don't want that 10 over on the left, I'm going to add it over to the right. And I get y equals 2x plus 8. Um, these are actually just the same line. So they have the same slope, but they fall on top of each other. So we're going to say these are the same line. All right, last one. Okay, I'm going to subtract away my x's to the other side. So I've got 5y equals negative 3x, because I subtracted them away, plus 2. Okay, now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. That means both of these get divided by 5. So I get y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 2 fifths. Gross. Okay. Um, subtract away my x's from both sides. I get negative 3y equals negative 5x plus 2. Divide both sides by negative 3. And I get y equals uh, negative divided by negative makes a positive 5 thirds x, and then a negative two thirds. I don't know who we made mad for these notes. Jeez. But look at these slopes. Those are opposite reciprocals. Therefore, these are perpendicular.